All right, I'm introducing with the uh, Impact Network. This is Jay Warren, Network Marketing Specialist from AskJWarren.com. We're going to be covering marketing and selling, marketing versus selling, and um, the importance of the art of a digital presence. All right, Jay Warren, go right ahead, my brother. Take it over. Well, I appreciate it. Appreciate it for having me, my man. So um, there, uh, there's two uh, topics that uh, you know we're going to discuss today. So. Uh, let's go to the the digital side first. So the digital marketing. So I get asked a lot, why do digital marketing or why build your brand online? And this is um, uh, it's, it's very simple. And what the reason why I say that is because people sign up with people. People don't people join people. They don't join companies. So once you've created a digital brand out there, uh, or just a brand for yourself and who you are and what you're about. Um, then people will start coming to you. It doesn't matter what company you're in, uh, people will come to you. And then, with, because on that digital marketing side too, you can touch a lot more people a lot faster. So, for example, you know, a lot of people do still do traditional marketing, whether it's cold calling, uh, rather it's you know face to face, B two B, and all that stuff. And that stuff still works, but it, it's very slow. I give you an example. So. Um, when I was, when I got my first client, you know, I started my business probably 2012, but I got my uh, first client, um, paid client, I should say, probably 2013. And I was in Australia at the time. And, you know, they, you know, came to me and, you know, they're still trying to figure out Facebook and all that stuff. And what they, uh, but before I got there, they, like a month before or something like that, they just had to drop like two grand on the yellow pages. And one of the things I asked, I was like, are you, um, you know, I said, do you go to the yellow pages? Like, do you, you know, look for business in the yellow pages? And they were like, no. I said, so why are you spending money in this marketing platform with the yellow pages if you're not doing it yourself? You know, if you're not doing it, if so, how, how you think you're going to be found in the yellow pages if um, you're not you're not looking for business in the yellow page as well? So they want obviously want to get out there with Facebook and all that stuff. So fast forward, we're we in 2020 now. <laughs> fast forward 2020 now. You know, this this where all the eyeballs are. All the eyeballs are, you know, digital. Whether it's a webinar, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, this is where all the eyeballs are. So it's important to brand you and put yourself out there first, and then talk, and then not just share who you are, but who you're serving. That's really really important because if you know who you're serving, then this makes you know it makes it a lot easier. And what I mean by that is because when I hear a lot of time, and I'll get into the, in this kind of transition to the marketing versus selling thing, but what I hear all the time is like, when there's somebody selling a product, what they'll talk about is, you know, uh, if they're selling a skincare product, like everybody has skin, they need this product. Or uh, if they're doing a the health and wellness, they're like, you know, everybody, you know, you know, needs this. But people don't buy what they need, they buy what they want. So you have to be able to get really niche specific on who it is that you want to target so you can end up making those sales. So um, to kind of close that out, uh, you, you wanna brand you first. It's always gonna be you, Inc., because no matter what company you're in, no matter what business you're in, you see uh, celebrities like Shaq. You know, he's doing The General, he's doing Icy Hot, he's doing all these different, you know, 24 hours and all that stuff, but it doesn't matter which company he's promoting, you know, People love Shaq, you know, you see what I'm saying? And, you know, I know he's had that platform with, you know, the Lakers and all that stuff, but he can, he's able to, uh, you know, go to all these different companies because of, you know, his brand, which is, you know, Shaq, Shaquille O'Neal, whatever it is. So uh, kind of close that out. So on the marketing versus selling side. So this is, this is really, really simple as well, too. So people combine the two with marketing and selling. So, and what I mean by that is that people are saying like, hey, uh, let me, um, what's the, you know, there's this ingredients in this healthy shake or whatever they're selling, you know, DM me for details. That's, uh, that's they're trying to market so they can sell. But sales is really, really simple. Sales is uh, basically a direct, you know, question. Hey, would you like to buy this? Yes or no? You just get a decision with sales. Hey, you know, I have, you know, they, they had that great thing on Wall Street where has, uh, hopefully you guys seen the Wolf of Wall Street, but they had that great um, um, scene in Wolf of Wall Street when, they, when the guy grabs a pen and he's like, hey, uh, I need to write my name or something like that. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna mess it up. But he, he said, he, uh, he has that pen and he's like, uh, write your name on this paper. 
is that I don't have a pen. That's the attitude. You can sell anything. Sell, sell, sell anything. me this pen right here. You can sell anything. Sell that. Go ahead. Sell me that pen. Can I finish eating first? I need today. Brad, show them how it's done. Boom. Sell me that pen. Watch. Go on. Let me sell this pen. That's my boy right there. This pen. Sell anything. Why don't you do me a favor? Why don't you name down that napkin for me? I don't have a pen. Exactly. Supply and demand, my friend. And he throws it to him. He says, supply and demand. So it's just basically asking a question or um, supplying something with a demand. So sales is really simple. The reason why people are scared to sell on a mental note is probably um, they're just afraid to add, you know, they're, they're afraid to accept money, which is, you know, so, you know, kind of a, you know, a subconscious thing, you know, growing up and stuff like that. Because if you're not able to accept, you know, a favor, you know, I'll give you a story before I go into marketing. So, like, if you're out, you know, on a dinner or something like that, and somebody's like, hey, I'll pay for dinner, and you reach for your wallet, he's like, no, 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 let, let me pay for it. Let me, let me, let me uh, handle that. Um, if you're not uh, able to accept that something simple like somebody buying you dinner, how are you going to accept, um, you know, cash or cash flow or money when it comes to your business? Because, you know, you need that cash flow. So if somebody wants to buy something for you and you're like, no, 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 I just want to give it away for free. That's something subconsciously about not being able to accept, um, you know, just accept something for free. So you want to be able to, uh, on the on the sales part, you want to be able to accept money. You're going to have to accept, you know, favors or whatever that people are doing for you. So I hope that makes sense. I know I kind of rambled a little bit on that, but I hope that makes sense. If you if it doesn't make sense, I, you know, you can ask me later. But um, on the marketing part, it's um, it's it's basically educational. You know, there, you know, there's clever ways that people are doing marketing. You see the Geico commercials, you see the pro uh, progressive commercials. They hardly ever talk about insurance. Um, but, you know, they, you know, and I know they got a bigger budget and all that stuff. But what they talk about is, you know, they're just like clever ways and, you know, comical ways or whatever to, you know, sell you insurance. But whatever business that you're in, how, how, what you do to market is just it's um, you're solving problems is, is basically what you're doing. So there's a question that people have and you answer that question. So it's a problem in the marketplace and you as an entrepreneur, you as a business owner, you're solving the problem. You're educating them. So um, me being in the network marketing space, you know, a lot of people don't buy uh, network marketing because they, they want to be in network marketing. What they buy network marketing for are, you know, they start their ML business because of the lifestyle that it creates. There's a, a quote um, in this book, it's called Magnetic Sponsoring. I got this book probably a long time ago, like 2012 or whatever. And, it's, and people said, and one of the things they said about marketing is like, people don't buy a drill because they want to, they want to drill. People buy a drill because they want the hole. So it's the same concept. People don't get into business because they want a business. People get into business because they want the lifestyle that it creates. And that's basically what marketing is. You are educating them and helping them down a path to make that sell. It's, you know, sometimes it's a slow process, sometimes it's a fast process, depending on what you did before or after you started this process. Um, but with marketing, you have to educate them and walk them down a path because when you're asking for money or you're, you know, you're receiving money or you're receiving cash flow, people like they want to feel, because um, all, you know, I said all, but most of buying is emotional. It's 85% uh, emotional so they want to feel good about their buying purchases and that's why when it comes to sale if you are pressuring them into sale and have that pit bull dog mentality and there's people who have that skill who, or who are able to do that um, but if you put that pressure on them then they, they may have buyer's remorse with marketing if you're actually walking them down that process and helping them you know you, you, you there's a problem in the marketplace you solve that problem you walk them down that uh, that path with that problem and able to solve it it makes, you know, it makes marketing very, very simple. It makes it fun too, because you're actually helping people. You're able to accept that cash flow, you're able to accept that money because you're actually helping people. You're not just out there trying to make sales, even though sales is important, you know? So um, that's that's pretty much it. I don't know how I'm gonna open this up to questions. Are, can y'all hear me by the way? Y'all can hear me, right? Yes, shake your head, yes. Cool, okay, all right, cool. So um, if, we want, if you guys wanna go into the q and I know that was a real quick, like, um, rundown of you know marketing versus sales and the uh the branding so if you have some questions you know please feel free ask me those questions um however you want to uh do you think it's more important to figure out how to sell yourself first or to address what problem the market needs to be solved um i think it's more important to address because if you address what the market needs to be solved first then 
um, you're selling yourself. So um, there, there's a thing, I'm not an attorney or anything like that, but there's a thing uh, that attorneys say is like, you know, in, in, in court, um, if you know more than the other person of the subject matter, that makes you an expert. So you can take that concept into business, meaning like if you know something more than, you know, more about what you're selling or what you're marketing, then the, the next person, then that makes you the expert right away. So I think a lot of people are waiting, you know, for somebody to anoint them, you know, the night thing, anoint them as an expert. But the thing is like, you have enough knowledge as it is right now to go out there and serve the marketplace. So if you serve the marketplace first, then you will be, then that makes you the expert. Then people are, you know, and if you do that, you know, consistently over time, you know, you're already shown that you're an expert in that, but then that's where the branding comes in and you're already selling yourself because, you know, you're, you're helping that marketplace in that niche. Can you give an example of a campaign that you launched that you spearheaded uh, where you were contracted by a client? Uh, what was your strategy in launching the campaign? What, what, what were, you, what were your, your metrics in terms of uh, success, uh, creating value for the company, creating awareness for our product? How, how would you measure your success based on an example of a, of a campaign that you launched? What, what are your metrics? What, what have you done? Can you give me like one example of something you did that that made its mark, so to speak. Um, so I can actually, I, I, so I'll give you two examples, and because this one right here was uh, very, very recent. So I have a client, and they are in a, um, they're like in a med spa type industry. And what I told them, even when I was going in, that I was like, I don't know. I, I was, I was honest. I was like, I don't know anything about, you know, your business med spa, but what I do know is how to attract the people who are actually looking for you know, that business. So they had um, some, I think it was, you know, like a happy gallon, Valentine Day event, you know, it's like, you know, where the girls get together on, uh, you know, Valentine's and, you know, they bash men. I'm just joking about that part. They don't do that. <laughs> but they, <laughs> but they, you know, but they got, you know, they got all these, you know, women together. And um, so I ran and, and I only had like two days to run this campaign. So they told me basically like the 10th, they were having this event before Valentine's Day, so they were having like on the 13th or something like that. So they sent me all this data of, you know, the list of clients that they have, the list of clients that they're looking for, how many people they wanted me to, uh, like the, the businesses that they wanted me to target. So I went on uh, Facebook and, you know, I was doing all this research basically, you know, within, within uh, like basically overnight because they, they wanted it fa fairly quick. And, um, and they ended up having like 200 people at that event. So I went there, it started like from four to eight. I went there about five because I was actually worried about, you know, like, you know, cause I, I've never, you know, I, I, with that with the turnout, I didn't know how many people were gonna be there. So I went there about five or something like that, stayed about an hour or something like that. And, you know, I left after that. The next day they told me they had like 200 people show up there. So, you know, that, well, that came through there and out of that 200, I think they said they got, you know, I think half of that or something like that of new clients from that. So, I mean, I think that was pretty successful not knowing about that business. Um, but another thing is like when I run events, um, I run events for, uh, and I target a lot of home-based business entrepreneurs, a lot of network marketers. And what I do is there, there's two campaigns I run. So I run like the organic ones where like I'll create something on Facebook um, or Meetup or something like that. And then I'll invite people, you know, to it via that way. And then I'll, um, what I'll do is I'll run uh, campaign ads to those people who are in that local area who are either, you know, wanting to make money or wanting to learn how to market or learn, want to learn how to prospect people. And, um, I, but I usually do that within, you know, a, I say a month's time. So like, um, I'm having an event on, I don't know if I have it on the 20th or 27th of March. So I've been, you know, creating the campaign now and start marketing basically this weekend. So by the 27th, I, I know, you know, how many, I can kind of gauge, you know, how many people are going to be there, how many people are, are going to be interested and stuff like that. Because the thing with um, not just marketing, but, you know, being a business owner, it's like you have to grab their attention. You know, people, you know, you have to value people's time and people's attention. Like, you know, uh, if, like if you're doing a video or um, anything like that, you gotta be able to capture their attention quick 
or they're gonna go on and they're gonna go to the next one. So from that seminar, I got about 50 people to sign up. And, uh, well, I got between an average of 30 and 50 people to, to attend my, and this was for about a year, and I took a break because it was a lot of work. But I got, for about a year, I was marketing the same, you know, the same area, and I got between 30 and 50 people to um, uh, attend, that, uh, attend that seminar. Now, in the beginning when I was doing this, I was testing and tracking and I would get, you know, five people there, 10 people there. Sometimes even in the beginning, I, you know, very, very beginning, like probably like when I first started moving back to Dallas, I would get like one or two people there. But I ran, even though I had like one or two people there, I ran it like I had 50 people there already because, you know, that person who was coming to that event, you know, they took time out their day to, you know, learn what it is that they wanted to learn at my event. So I valued that one person, like I had 50 people in the room because, you know, there's been people who's like, oh, there's only one person come or there's only two people come and they just, you know, kind of like, you know, screw it, I'm not gonna run events, events don't work. But you have to continue to run those events or run those campaigns to kind of see what works. But to answer your question, I hope to answer your question, but to add to the question, the, the best answer when you're running campaigns is to, you know, test and track, test and tracks. And that's either if you're doing stuff online or you're doing stuff offline. You got you have to test and track so you know how to pivot because a campaign that you create may work, you know, really, really well, or a campaign that you created, you put all this time into and you're like, man, this is gonna be dope. You know, I'm gonna get all these people there or, you know, I'm gonna make a lot of money from this and it may not bring you anything. So you gotta test and track which one, you know, like what it is that you're doing so that you can get the data and you get that information so you can learn how to pivot and stuff like that. So, how can we take control of our brand online through social media marketing? Um, so, how can you take uh, control of your brand with social media marketing? Um, so, definitely, uh, I would say with you know this thing right here. Hold on, I even brought something. It's called my phone. <laughs> it's your phone. So, you take a lot of pictures. You take a lot of pictures. You do a lot of videos. Um, personal and uh, business and what I mean by that is that you like when you start your online journey you want to take your audience with you you want to you want them to feel like they're a part of your journey even you know like you, you got to be authentic um, you know I mean what people try to do uh, they want to get a professional you know a, prof a professional website professional uh, pictures done professional videos they want to do all this stuff spend all this money and um, and they think that's what's going to attract, you know, that audience. People, people are attracted to all, uh, you, you know, being who you are, and they're going to be attracted to you being authentic, you being real. Because now in this age, you're not going to be, you're not, you're not going to be able to fake anything. Like in the beginning, uh, I'll say in the beginning, but like back in, I'll say early 2000. This is when even I, when I was at marketing, because this is, uh, you know, somebody was talking about this at a seminar, and I went back and I did some research. But at um, uh, like 2000, you, you could basically put a lead capture page up there or you could put a website up there and, you know, just be able to make money, you know, hiding behind a website and stuff like that. Those days are gone. Those days are gone. So when you're branding yourself, you got to put yourself first. You got to be, you know, you got, you can't be afraid to put yourself out there. Are you going to get negative comments? Yes. Are people going to say, hey, you know, look at your hair or, you know, why, you know, why you didn't put any makeup on or whatever? Yes, you're going to get that, but you have to, if you are focused on solving people's problems and impacting more people and, you know, inspire, inspiring or motivating people through your business, then all that stuff won't matter because those negative comments are not going to go away. I remember when I first got my negative, com my first negative comment on social media and I was like, it's like, damn, you know, that's why I feel like, you know, I made it because I was like, you know, people are taking shots at me now, you know, in my business, you know, I, I got negative comments all the time when I was, you know, playing basketball and stuff like that. But <laughs> when they start taking shots at me um, in, uh, in my business and stuff like that, I was like, okay, I'm headed down the right path because, you know, I'm starting to, you know, get, <coughs> excuse me, I'm starting to get, uh, you know, people to, you know, not like what I'm doing or criticizing what I'm doing and stuff like that. And then, um, so I knew I was down the right path, but I hope to answer your question. Like when you brand yourself, you know, you got to take pictures of yourself. You got to take people on your journey. Um, you got to create videos, just small, just like a quick, you know, 15, 30 second video. Like, hey guys, I was on a walk, you know, and I was thinking about this in my business and, 
I think this would be helpful for you today. If you do this, this, and this, and this, uh, I think that that'll help you, you know, rather it's, you know, read affirmations or, you know, on a daily walk, whatever it is that you're doing, just, you know, check in with your audience. Um, and then when you're consistent over time, you know, that, that'll help build your brand. What is, I guess, what is the best uh, social media site to uh, really like build your brand, I guess? Or, or, or to get like yourself out there, I would say. Um, that, that, the best social media site uh, to get your brand out there. Um, uh, how do you answer this? You got to, you have to, you have to test and track. And I think, um, it would, it, it'd be like, it's not more of what, what's the best, uh, website or platform, social media platform, um, to help you build your brand. It's what it is that, um, not either where your audience is going to be, like what, what audience you, who you're trying to attract. So if I'm on Facebook, I'm probably going to attract, you know, an, uh, the older audience, you know, 35 and up. If I'm on Instagram, I'm gonna attract, you know, probably 24 and up. If I'm on Snapchat, I'm gonna attract 15 and up. So it depends on what it is, who, you know, who in your business you're trying to attract and whose attention you're trying to get. But also, it, it, it also depends on which one are, do you want to learn? Because, you know, if you are trying to attract, you know, professionals, uh, what was that thing called? The, the Dolly Parton Challenge? Dolly Dolly Parton Challenge, where they had those four different, you know, was it like LinkedIn and face, yeah, Facebook and then Instagram and then Tinder and stuff like that. So <laughs> um, that, that that's kind of like the mindset that you have to have. And what I mean by that is just, you know, who is it that you're trying to attract? Like, what's your audience that you want to attract? And what is it that you're actually good at? And then put your energy there. And then once you get there, then you can start another one and you can leverage it. So say, for example, you start on Instagram you got, you know, a thousand followers and stuff and something like that. Like, hey guys, you know, I'm here on Instagram, but I'm about to open a YouTube, you know, make sure you like and uh, subscribe to me on that. You only get, you only get a minute video here, or, you know, a five minute video of uh, IGTV watch here. But you know what, I'm gonna start uploading, you know, more content to YouTube and it's gonna be longer. These, are, you know, where I go into more in depth, these are gonna be more like 15, 20 minute videos, you know, make sure you subscribe to me on YouTube. Um, or you can do the same thing with Facebook if you're trying to get an older crowd. Like, hey guys, I'm on here on uh, IG. Um, make sure that you follow me on, on Facebook. Make sure you like my page because I'm, you know, I'm, not, I'm kicking content out there. And I know now, uh, you know, people are talking about TikTok. You know, so um, you know maybe you, you jump. You know, hey guys, I'm on uh, Instagram or Facebook or wherever you are. You know, follow me on TikTok so you can, you know, you can follow me there too. And then, you know, is everybody going to follow you there? No, but then you'll get the certain people, the certain audience over there. And then at the end of, the, of those videos, you just make sure you have some type of call to action, you know, so you can direct them where you really want them to go. So if, you, if your main one is Instagram and you're creating videos on Facebook, you just tell them like, hey, you know, make sure you follow me on Instagram. That's why you do the most of the content or vice versa. Um, I had a question about um, the analytical side of marketing. Okay. Kind of, so right now we're experimenting. I'm, I'm, in, class, I'm in school for marketing currently. <laughs> and uh, we're experimenting with Qualtrics. I don't know if you're familiar with it. No, what, what's, what's Qualtrics? Qualtrics, so basically Qualtrics, cons it, like, it's kind of like an analytical um, application that I think you pay for, because like our school gets it for free. Okay. But um, you pay for it and it kind of gives you the analytical side of kind of the social media and like what people are talking about with the specific topic. Okay. I just, I wanted to know how you approach analytics personally. Um, so I, like, it depends on which platform I'm on. So, um, I, if, what'd you say that's called Qualtrics? Qualtrics. I'll like type it out. Okay. All right. It doesn't matter. I can't see, but I'll, I'll remember it. It's, it's recorded. I'll just go back and check. So, <laughs> um, so, um, Qual, Qualtrics, I mean, so how I, how I approach the analytics side is like, like, so if I'm running an ad on Facebook, then I'll let it run for, I'll say maybe seven to 10 days, and then I'll go back there and see how that ad is performing. If I'm doing it on Instagram, I do the exact same thing. Um, if I do it on Twitter, I do the exact same thing. So I, I just go in the back office of that social media platform, and then I have a, a website and a blog too. So um, like if I'm, you know, when I put a blog post out there, I'll see where the majority of my traffic is coming from, and whichever platform where I see people are, you know, clicking it, 
and I'm getting a lot of unique um, visitors, then I'll try to post more there. Um, because I know, for example, like I'll post on Facebook, but I can't, I'm not able to post that blog post link on Instagram. But what I can do is leave people on, in my, um, like in the, in the bio or something like that. So I know that a lot of people aren't coming, getting traffic from there, but I still try to lead them to my blog post on Instagram. Um, but as far as the analytics, I, I go, whatever platform I'm on, I'll just go back there in the back office and then that's, that's kind of how I study it. But it seems like whatever the, whatever software that is, that does it like... Um, it's extremely like technical, it kind of just like judges on whether or not there are negative connotations associated with like a specific thing. Like for example, we're kind of doing like a fake research assignment where we're searching like certain things and I'm doing public transportation within Chicago. Like that's the topic that I'm focused on. So our public transportation system is called the CTA uh -huh. and um, basically you literally just put in some the CTA along with certain like keywords that are associated with the CTA or whatever topic that you're discussing and it kind of like judges based off of specific social media platforms what is like what people are saying about it okay All and right. like what other things are associated with the topic that you are trying to focus on or like are researching Okay, and it hit and it hits all the platforms. So it would hit. It know. hits primarily. It's like primarily Twitter and uh, Facebook. Okay. But it, it hits any like really any platform that you want to like focus on. Okay. All right. And well, like so for example, like if I wanted to, um, you know, I'm going to Q and A now too because I, I just got interested on analytics. Um, it's so, a good application. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like a dope software. Um, so, um, so if I wanted to connect like all the social media, you know, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and even my blog posts, I could connect all those to this software, and it would tell it, it would tell me like where the data. It even goes beyond, and it goes to like Reddit and stuff. Like, oh really? Just, it, yeah, it does. Like basically, any social, pretty much any social media platform, like you can, um, you can like kind of like focus on. Yeah. And it comes up with like word clouds, what people are specifically saying, like how it's, like, again, how it's perceived. Usually it's just like kind of like focused on like if people are perceiving it in a negative way or if people gotcha. are perceiving it in a positive way. And then like you can definitely like go into certain specifics. It has so many like specific tools to use, which is why it's kind of like something that you have to pay for because it does all of like the really gruesome hard work for you okay yeah so, so yeah, that's dope I, I mean now I wanted like me like in the beginning I wouldn't use that because I think that would be confusing I think it was saying people down the right wrong path but like now in the space that's why I was asking those questions because if I'm able to gauge those analytics because like I said I go back you know, basically on each platform and I look um, except my except on my blog my blog basically has you know where I know where people are coming from because it's it's connected to Google Analytics and like you know wherever my link is it, like it tells me it's coming from Bing, Yahoo, you know Google. So my, my blog basically has you know that built-in software so to speak. It's not, I don't think it's that technical, but like if you're using just only social media, yeah yeah yeah. Like if you if you're doing like social because the thing is like if you're using social media, then um, I don't like you can you know I mean through school obviously that's you know, uh, you know, dope to have, but you know, if you're if you're in business and you got paid for it, then you know some people may or may not use it. When it comes to marketing, um, like I think the basic concept, like you know, when you talk about analytics and tools and stuff like that, but the basic concept of marketing is being able to connect with another human being. You know, if you can connect with them on an emotional level, um, what what we what we say in marketing is. You know, you know, you, 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 there's pain points. So, you know, you basically, you know, you're hitting them with a knife and then you're twisting it. So whatever that pain is that they're at, you know, you, you want to be able to like, basically when they're, you know, lay their bed at night, they, they, they're not able to wake up because they want what it is that, that marketing they want, because they, people want their problem solved. Like, you know, the brain is always wanted, you know, it's like there's open loops and that, you know, you, if you have a question, if they have questions, they want those questions answered in their brain. So from a marketing standpoint, if you're able to answer those questions, then, you know, those will translate into sales. So, you know, all the analytics stuff and stuff like that is, is great, it's dope. It's able to kind of gauge, you know, who, who, you know, kind of hone in on your target market and your niche. But 
on a, I don't want to say a broad scale, but like on a, just a, a marketing principle, like if you are able to, you know, get in, you know, talk, you know, talk to them on a, an emotional level, get the, get your message across, then all that analytical stuff is, is a bonus. Because if you can, you know, just talk to another human being, ask questions, solve their problems, you know, they'll, that, that, I mean, that's when your retention rate goes up. That's when, all, you know, all that stuff is, you know, that's, that's when you basically have built that foundation where it basically doesn't matter what um, market you, I mean, what problem you solve within that market, they're, they're going to trust you because they know that they're coming to you for the, for the answer. So that was another rant. Sorry. <laughs> um, definitely appreciate Jay coming, uh, coming out and, and definitely sharing some nuggets. A lot of people in the world look at business and they're just completely confused. And it's not that hard. It just takes education, a little bit of understanding, research, and you got to be committed to it, right? So that's what the process that we're in. I'm glad that Jay could come and, uh, and drop, drop these nuggets on things that I think everyone needed to hear. Um, we will we'll chop, we'll screw this up, we'll cut it up and all that other good stuff and make sure that we can uh, provide it for the other individuals that are not here for this moment. But um, I definitely appreciate everybody with their questions and uh, just giving the, uh, the, the proper attention and respect uh, to Jay tonight. Thank you for watching the video. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe on my YouTube channel. Or if you're on your Facebook family, make sure you like and hit that See First button. Or on, if you're on any social media platforms, you can hit Ask Jay Warren. Also, head over to my website at AskJayWarren.com where you can get offers on how to build your business. Y'all have a good one. Peace.